TLO, what's poppin'? We are on kick. We are live. Late night stream, man, I know. Uh, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells if you cannot join. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, right here, if you missed the live and there's any highlights, this is where it'll be, man, for me at least. Uh, we also got the Patreon. This is a light description of everything that's on the channel. Um, also, we got the Discord. And this, 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 this is from the Discord, actually. Told you. Told you we was going to eventually use the Discord, man. If you want to follow me on any of these things, there's a link tree in my description down below. Click that link tree. It'll open up to everything. You get me. This is Clueless American's Guide to Picking a Team in the Premier Leagues. I got my team. I don't, know what, I don't know what all the fuss and hoopla is about. I got mine. But I mean, okay. Now six games into the Premier League season, the transfer window is closed, and a major coach has already been fired. Which means now is the ideal time to pick a team to bandwagon in the best sports league outside of America. So let's say, as the name of this video implies, you are a clueless American when it comes to the Premier League. You might I'm not clueless. I know everything. Have played a little FIFA and know the names of Ronaldo and Slaw, but with the NFL returning, you don't got the time to learn who are all the big movers and shakers this year. That is why I am here. Let me be your Sherpa, your guide to the most exciting, the most competitive, the most physical sports league outside of America. Let me give you a quick digestible guide on all the big boy clubs in the Prem, how they're looking this season, and hopefully by the end of this video. This is actually perfect because we're going to be doing a lot of Premier League stuff on kick, man. Now that we can watch highlights, now we can watch probably full games. Like, I don't, I don't hey, I'm out here. Hope you choose a team oh, the bandwagon that won't let you down as much as your American teams. Looking at you, Jets fan. So welcome to a clueless American's guide to choosing a Premier League team to bandwagon 2023 edition. And speaking of bandwagoning, yes, that's right. I'm jumping on Team Raid Shadow Legends. Oh, legends thousands of I understand you gotta pay the bills, but they are not sponsoring me, buddy. <laughs> Salute, though. In the game. You gotta start off, you are a discerning individual. You know that this year is a World Cup year. So it would be logical to support maybe some American talent in the Premier League. And the biggest name when it comes to the US men's national team is, of course, Captain America himself, Christian Pulisic. The man who was on fire during the pandemic season for Chelsea. And a year ago, I would have wholeheartedly supported pretty much any American going ahead and bandwagoning on Chelsea. But that was a year ago, and the Chelsea ship has gone tits up for the London Giants. Quick recap, two years ago, they were champions of all of Europe, and they accomplished this through the demonic sorcery of one Thomas Tuchel. But now, I mean, just six games into the season, Chelsea- No, I'm saying salute to all your past, past, past transgressions and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? But you know how I'm coming. Should I go get my coffee, my teacup, or what? I don't know. Chelsea have parted ways with their evil genius. Now, many consider Thomas Tuchel to be one of the greatest tactical minds in history. But he is also known in footballing terms as a giant asshole. Just a big ass prick. You know that pretentious douchebag at work that always thinks he's right? Imagine that guy. Assholes win championships. Look at Kobe Bryant. Look at Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we talking about? I, times 100. And that's why this man never lasts more than three seasons at any club he goes to. But goddamn, I don't know if this shit show is on him this time. Because what you gotta understand is Chelsea have been through a lot of turmoil this past year. The club that Tuchel formerly coached for was recently sold to a new consortium because their previous owner, Roman Bramovich, had very strong ties to good old Tutin Putin. And now these new American owners have made a giant colossal mess. They fucked up the transfer window, letting a lot of the world-class defenders go for free, which is not good. Probably should get something back for them. These people had next to no football experience, so it was no surprise when they made an absolute farce of the transfer window. And then, when they finally went out and bought a striker for Tuchel, they gave him two games to use him and then fired him. Like, why? For what? Why would you even buy Aubameyang if you're gonna fire Tuchel immediately? I feel like everything America touches is a shit show sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Let, let's just, you know what I'm saying? Keep, let's, let's, let's have our hands in it, but not directly on it. You know, watch from afar. You just wasted tens of millions of dollars on players that the next manager might not even want. And apparently they fired him to bring this new guy, Mr. Potter. This dude's been killing it for Brighton over the past couple of seasons. There was a lot of hype around this guy, but you just never know. Some managers are just great at managing teams that are underdogs, but it's a completely different beast when you get one of the top six in the Prem. And it's just Facts. all so strange at Chelsea at the moment. I can't <laughs> trust this stuff. I do not know 
what this new ownership group is doing. Chelsea were already giants. They were winning trophies for a reason. And you come in and you completely gut the club from the inside out and think you're going to do a better job? That just reeks of arrogance. And I to America, America one on one. You get me. I have a sneaking suspicion that there are many Chelsea fans that feel the same. And I think in private, they gladly start buying Russian oil again if it meant Roman Abramovich walking back <laughs> through that door. My verdict on this team this season, avoid. Avoid at least for this season and for the foreseeable future. I think this new ownership group is gonna have to learn things the hard way. Just as Manchester United fans, ever since Americans took over their club. Speaking of which, let's talk about Manchester United, maybe the most recognizable name in club. Here, go ahead and leave football to the professionals. America, we know that's not us. That's not for us. We can't go in there and try to lead when we have not even ever been a, 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 a fighting force. Maybe like once. We got some players, but like, come on. Love football. And in my previous videos about the Premier League, as a fan of this club for over 15 years, my advice has always been, don't do it. Do not bandwagon Manchester United. Do not become a fan of Manchester United. Save yourself the pain and support the other team in Manchester if you want to see a team that consistently wins. Because this team has been a laughing stock for the past decade now, and the start of this season was no different. Their sparkling new manager, Eric Ten Hag, was touted as the next big thing in football management. Ir Just because you ball with a beard don't mean you, you know what I'm saying, gonna get it done. Everybody can't be me. You get me. Marked as the possible successor to Pep Guardiola at Man City. But after a shock 2-1 loss to Brighton in the opener, he followed that up with a shambolic 4-0 embarrassment by once relegation fodder Brentford. It looked like Ten Hag was completely out of his depth, that the Premier League was far too big for his shoes. His team didn't just lose, they were utterly uh, outplayed out. at every level of the game by two teams. Like in football, anything after 3-0 is a blowout. If you got, if, the, if your opponents got three and you got nothing, you're getting blown out. <laughs> they were playing in a division below them only a few years ago. The beams on social media were ruthless. The best one wasn't even an intentional meme. You had to accept cookies to see Manchester United <laughs> position in the tape because they were dead bottom. Dead bottom hey. of the league after two games. And there was legit concern they might get relegated. That is how awful that team looked. People were calling for Ten Hag's shiny bald head on a pike. And to make things worse, the team they had to play next was Liverpool, a side that just last season, many were saying was one of the greatest Premier League teams ever assembled. Yeah. A team that beat uh, Manchester United so badly last season. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's talk about it. That they got two different managers fired. I mean, so on match day three, Manchester United actually we, beat Liverpool. Yeah. We were all shocked because you as well. Jane Sancho. So maybe he's one of those managers that play up. Like when the competition is not there, they don't play hard. But when the comp is there, but you can't do that in certain leagues, man. It's like you can't do that for, against professionals because at any day they can show up. I <laughs> sat a couple players down and then Marcus Rashford hit him on the counter. It was a result that pretty much saved their season. And from then on, they have won four games in a row, including beating a top of the table Arsenal side that was undefeated prior. So what the fuck happened? Well, the big difference was Ten Hag grew a pair of balls. He did the unthinkable. He dropped Cristiano Ronaldo and the captain of the team, Harry Maguire, to the bench. Now, as American, this might shock y'all. Why would anyone bench Ronaldo? Well, the best way to put it to you guys is, you know how in the modern NBA, everything has evolved to be basically, can you shoot a three? Ronaldo is like a center who can't shoot threes. Because what you gotta understand is that in modern football, a lot of systems, and Ten Hag systems especially, is predicated on having your offensive players pressing. And that's something that Ronaldo is not only bad at, he's historically one of the worst pressing players of all time. And even though he is a living legend. So wait, 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 wait. Offensive players pressing? Somebody gotta explain, y'all gotta explain some of this in the, in the, in the, ch in the uh, comments for me because that is an unfamiliar term that I am not, not equipped to handle. What does an offensive player pressing mean? Also, a huge liability. Without your striker pressing, the system just doesn't work. And Ronaldo, damn, he's dead last? So sadly, has become a dinosaur. The game has kind of evolved past him. So after the dismal two games of trying to play him and Maguire, he had to bench those two and play players that obviously are not as talented as those two, but were actually capable of running his tactic. And since then, he's won all four games. 
he has now. So as an offensive player, you have to be able to play through press. Is that what we're talking about? I thought he said offensive player had to be able to press. Mm, oh, so, okay, strikers who score goals have to be able to play press on defense. Got it. Got it. Got you. Got you. Got you. Okay. We learned him. Now, shown the tactical prowess that made him so coveted by all the big clubs in Europe. And in the process, dragged Manchester United from bottom of the league to fifth. Before the season started, I said that top four would be an incredible accomplishment with this side. And two games in, I was not very hopeful. People were kind of giving it to me on social media, not gonna lie. But now, I think they might just have a chance. Now to be clear, I still think that they only finished top six. For as good as this four win streak has been, this is still the first. I can't wait to troll people. Just don't let Liverpool have a good, you know what I'm saying? Don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't let Liverpool be in any championship type talk because I'm on y'all heads. I don't care. <laughs> First year learning a new system, so there's bound to be a lot of teething pains. And also, their transfer window was only okay. Basically bought half of Ten Hag's old Ajax team and Casemiro from Real Madrid. Nice pieces, but no real world beaters. You know what I'm saying? And it'll most likely take a few windows to reshape this team in Ten Hag's image. This is a rebuild year for Manchester United, but the hope is that maybe, just, just maybe, this is the first solid foundation that they've had since the legendary Sir Alex Fergie left. But it's still early days in the bald-headed era of Manchester United. So let's see how Ten Hag fares for the rest of the season. My verdict on this team, cautiously optimistic, but well, probably check back next year. Now the next team we're gonna recommend is only for a certain subset of American fans. And those Americans that I'm talking about are the ones who've been following a team that has just sucked dick since the day they were born. <laughs> so if you belong to a fan base that has worn paper bags uh, over their heads to a home game, then I think you deserve to bandwagon. I feel like he's about to hate on somebody. The other team in Manchester. Yes, oh, okay. I'm talking about the defending Premier League champions, okay. Manchester City. Not uh, only, are they the defending champions? They're back-to-back -back champions. And in fact, they've won four out of the last five seasons. They are more dominant than the Golden State Warriors in their prime. So it makes They got some W jerseys. I'm telling you, football, football got the best jersey in sports. And even more terrifying is that they won it all last year without playing a true striker. So in the offseason, they went out and bought the best young striker in the world, Erling Holland. And this dude was seen with the same amount of hype as when LeBron James entered into the NBA. Hold on now. Wait a minute. Who is this? I've been seeing him in Premier League highlights. I just don't know who Warriors he is. Warriors in their prime. And what makes them even more terrifying is that they won it all last year without playing a true striker. So in the offseason, they went out and bought the best young striker in the world. Where he from? He looked like an ogre. It's given ogre. I'm just asking. I'm not trying to be funny. Erling Holland. And this dude was seen with the same amount of hype as when LeBron James entered into the NBA. 58 goals in 57 games? He's from Norway, got you. And Holland has already somehow surpassed all expectations. He doesn't just look like the best young striker in the world. He, he looks like one of the best players in the world, period. Just look at the 22 year old ragdolling fully grown man. He's got the size, pace, and skills to be the final form cell of this era. And he is scoring goals at an unheard of rate. For Something from the eyes, how tall is dude? Look big as hell. About 6'6. Six, 6'6, six. Six, six, two, 220. 58 out of 57, 58 goals in 57 games is insane. For context, to be considered an elite striker in the Premier League, you need to score about 20 goals in 38 games. Holland has already scored half of that, 10 goals in six. The all time single season record is 34, and this kid might have a legit chance to break it. Yo, when did this come out? Eight months ago, okay. Alright. Still valid for me. In his first season in the prep. Because Manchester City are force feeding him the ball. Remember when you were a kid and playing Pee Wee and your coach just told you to give it to the most talented kid? That's literally what they're doing. But they're doing it. I was the most talented kid, so I don't remember that. I remember getting the ball. A the most competitive Pause. league in the world. It's obscene. It's absurd. And it's a fucking joke how easy it's making it look. The only questions now, really, are can this kid stay healthy and can Man City win the Champions League this year? Because if everyone stays healthy, the race for the Golden Boot and the Premier League are pretty much sewn up. That is how dominant Holland and... The, the, the Premier League Championship was today, right? We're gonna go watch some highlights after this. Manchester uh -huh. City have been. 
they are playing FIFA. Damn, he a 98 in FIFA? Damn, they got two 98s? They got two 98s, a 96, a 95, a 96. A, their whole... Everybody's in the 90 except the goalkeeper? They paid for their team. <laughs> this is crazy. They must got money. They're just going out and just grabbing all the best players. This is like a... This is like a team build. This is like flight when he plays 2K and NBA 2K. Like, what is going on? That is how dominant Holland and Man Manchester City have been. They are playing FIFA. I'm a Liverpool player, but if I'm playing with FIFA, hey, don't, don't tempt me. On we'll go get right some now. good players. My on this team, you should only feel good about bandwagoning them. If you are a fan of a long-suffering team like the Jets, or your dog has cancer, because simply, they are too fucking good. If you want to be the guy who became a Warriors fan after they got KD, that's the level of shamelessness you need to dick ride this team this year. But honestly though, as a new American fan, they're gonna be the most exciting team to watch. For Messi and Ronaldo in the twilight of the career, this Holland kid and Mbappe are pretty much set to be this next generation's goats. And for all my young fans out there who are- I've seen Mbappe play kind of more fans of players as averse to teams i'm going team holland over mbappe all day but maybe i'm getting a little too ahead of myself because manchester city aren't even at the top of the table right now that honor surprisingly to many and probably even their own fan base are arsenal now arsenal have been in the oh. same boat as manchester united fans for the past decade yeah they were awesome in the 90s but since then They've kind of been a joke. And last year was no different. They were insanely inconsistent, looking sensational one moment and then losing to a shit team the next. Now, much of that could be put up to the fact that they are, in fact, the youngest team in the Premier League. And they also have the youngest manager in the Premier League as well. As you want to see how... Experience plays a lot in every sport, man. Experience goes a long way. Even in the locker room, even in the day-to-day -day mechanics of a team, man. Experience, vets, you need vets. Look at Zion Williamson. He out there impregnating strippers. That's none of my business. But you know, if there was vets around, and I'm not talking CJ McCullen type vets that don't get no, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about vet vets. <laughs> How that season went, they were featured on Amazon's All or Nothing last year. Not sponsored, just found the show hilarious. Because after watching it, I was convinced that they should fire Arteta. Because there's this moment where a player is coming back from an ankle injury, right? And they show him getting treatment in the physio table, and Arteta walks up, and slaps him on the ankle. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Are you stupid? But apparently I was wrong because they are slapping dick this season. For one. What did he just say? What are you doing? Are you stupid? But apparently I was wrong because they are slapping dick this season. What does he even mean by that? Like, what? Yeah, we out here slapping. I can't even repeat that. For one, they had a fantastic transfer window. Their new center back, Saliba, looks like a quality defender. And stealing Gabriel Jesus away from Man City has been a dinosauric upgrade at the striker position for them. They opened the season by winning their first five games. And even though they lost their most recent one to Manchester United, they... Um, See, with, 20, with 12 minutes and 45 seconds in, and we've only mentioned Liverpool slightly, I'm curious, I'm, I'm wondering what's going on here. I'm gonna be real with you, as a Man United fan, Arsenal look better than us. This kid, Odegaard, a failed wonder kid over at Real Madrid, has finally blossomed into a baby KDB over at Arsenal. He's pulling the strings in the midfield. He's slicing defenses open. The kid is just a delight to watch play his game. And then you got Martinelli and Saka who are incredibly exciting on the wings. It is just a really lovable, enjoyable to watch young core players. Now they did suffer their first loss of the season up to Manchester United. And this is gonna be their first big test. How do they respond? to this loss? Do they let this affect their confidence and fall back into their inconsistent ways of last year? Or do they learn from the previous season? Do they dig deep, show some grit, and go again? That will be the next step for this young team. And I, for one, am hoping that they can put it all together. Although, my verdict for this team for this season is that even though they started out hot, I think they're a little bit too young to be true title contenders. Not with Man City in the same league. Not this. He seems like a, whoever this is doing this video is very unbiased. It's, it's been fair so far. He not completely deriding one one team, you know what I'm saying? Even his favorite team, he's, you know, being a realis realistic 
realistic about it. And now I guess I should talk about Arsenal's biggest rivals and the team many consider to be the dark horse coming into the season. And that of course is Tottenham Hotspur. And they've always had a reputation for, you know, ah, they're gonna make top four, but not much else. But for the first season, what seems like a millennia, a lot of pundits actually believe in this team. And that is because they have one of the best mercenary managers in world football, Antonio Conte. And seven games in, the tiny Italian has already gotten to a handshake war with Thomas Tuchel while quietly grinding out wins and has Tottenham sitting third in the table, ready to pounce if anyone slips up. Spurs really do feel like a tiger waiting in the grass right now. They had at as good a transfer window as anyone, and the new boy with Charleston seems to be annoying defenses as much as ever, and offers a different dimension to Spurs if Son or Kulishevsky are having an off night. And Harry Kane is, is just doing Harry Kane things. He continues his sensational form from last season. The only way defenders are stopping him in the air right now is to just handball it before it can get to his head, and just pray that VAR isn't a thing anymore. And Sonny Boy, who is having a little bit slow start to the season, came on in the last game and scored a sensational hat trick in 15 minutes. The qual- It's a hat trick in 15 minutes? Who was he playing against? Sunday leaguers? What's going on? Quality on two of these strikes are simply world class. And if it wasn't for the dominance of Holland and City, I'd be giving them more hype. But 2022 Man City is a thick and they are big problems. But I will say this, if City for some reason hit some unforeseen snag, Conte has the ability to make sure that this year is gonna be Tottenham's. Pause. <laughs> hey, yo. Yeah. Next up is Liverpool. Ah, okay. Here we go. And what the fuck happened to you, bro? Like last- Chill. I know there's been some snags in the world, in the road, you know what I'm saying? But this is not how we should start this out. Next up is Liverpool. And what the fuck happened to you, bro? Like last season, you were challenging for a historic quad. People wanted to anoint you as the greatest team to ever grace the Premier League. But a month into the new season, you're toiling in sixth, struggling in Europe, Although, to be fair, every team is struggling in Europe besides Man City. And Kloppy, for the first time in his Liverpool tenure, is actually being questioned. Tuchel got sacked for less. And let me remind you that at the moment, Chelsea is higher on the table than Liverpool. And this team just looks so... Didn't finish the Premier League very well this season. Uh, obviously, we didn't get where we wanted to be. Um, but everybody has a, a, a bad year. Everybody can't, you know, four in a row. Them, you know what I'm saying? Three in a row. Them. But four was getting tough out here. You get me? You know what I'm saying? People were people were constantly, you know, getting better and getting better. You know what I'm saying? Next year's a new year. On Liverpool, if that makes sense. They're bereft of creativity, and they're all over the place defensively. The loss of Sadio Mane was a way bigger deal than many See? made it out to be, myself included. But I think the biggest factor with this team has to be the injuries. They're missing a third of the first team, and that's why they have zero creativity in their midfield. And the front three, as electric as they are, they're not that creative either. They need service for them to work. You combine that with the fact that Virgil van Dijk has for some reason been trying to block shots with just vibes lately, and they to work. You combine that with the fact that Virgil van Dijk has for some reason been trying to block shots. What is he doing? No, is this what I got to look forward to? What is this? Why is his hands behind his back? with just vibes lately and then you compound that with the fact that their new 80 million dollar striker Darwin Nunes headbutted a dude and got a three-match ban for it and you can kind of understand why they started out a little bit sluggish this year but with all that said I wouldn't hit the panic button on them just yet these problems are solvable and the Calvary is already on its way Tiago their most creative midfielder is hopefully back to full health soon and as Rocky has to start in they have the leadership to go ahead and weather this they're gonna find form and when a couple more players return from the physio table I can see that in about a month from now when they play Man City if they can get a win off of them, then they could be right back in the hunt. It was, it was wishful thinking. So Liverpool fans, probably calm down a little bit. It's a long season. You never know. But I'm going to keep it with you. Chances aren't likely that you're This season coming up, like I know the season just finished, you know. Uh, Man City won, right? The Premier League. But, you know, as clearly it was expected, as we said in this video. But, you know, we, Liverpool has a point to prove for, they're forgetting about us. They're forgetting about what we have done. They're forgetting that we will never walk alone. They're forgetting what greatness looks like. Are we going to be an underdog? Fine. But underdogs come back. Underdogs win. Underdogs tell a story. Underdogs build character. You get me.
catching Man City. The way that Holland's banging them in, I don't think Liverpool could afford this slow start. And at this point, they would need an injury to the big Norwegian salmon to get back within a whiff of Man City. But because of this big ass dude, like, what are you doing? They would need an injury to the big Norwegian salmon to get back within a whiff of Man City. What is this? Bro, chill. <laughs> and city. But because of the slow you start and maybe a little bit doom and gloom on the season, this could actually work out for you, my American friend. Because if you are new to the Prem, Liverpool still remains my top choice for neutrals to bandwagon. They're owned by Americans, LeBron owns part of this club. When they have the players, they typically play a wildly exciting brand of football. And what better time to hop in than when they're not looking so hot? It's the best time to bandwagon, you buck. Exactly. That's why I'm a Liverpool fan. That ain't why I'm a Liverpool fan, but you know, he's making sound legit. I love you so high, brother. And they got a coach as lovable as Ted Lasso, and the players are world class. Just don't ask Trent Alexander to defend. My verdict on the team, probably not their year this year, but a good bet to be an amazing watch for the rest of the season and many years to come. And now, of course, is the portion of the video where I talk to the cool kids in the back. Everybody loves a good sleeper. And of course, it would be easy cool. to suggest Brighton because they've been the early darlings of the season or maybe even Newcastle because they just got bought by the Saudis but with Brighton losing Graham Potter and the Saudis not quite opening up their piggy banks yet I don't know if this season is the season for those two so I thought I'd go for two more intriguing teams for my American brethren this season and if you're looking for a team with 10 lasso vibes I mean look no further than Leeds United or if some would do them Leeds United States of America because not only do they feature Brandon Aronson and Tyler Adams too Lee's got a W party scene, but I don't know about this. Of America's brightest young talents in their starting squad. They're also coached by an American, Wisconsin-born Jesse Marsh. Jesse is only the second American-born coach to manage in the Premier League. Don't trust it. And it wasn't easy for him when he took over for the legendary and beloved Bielsa. The UK papers universally panned Marsh, literally labeling him the Ted Lasso of the Premier League. And Marsh was not too fond of this label. I'm not sure Ted Lasso helped. But under his leadership, he badger pressed Leeds out of relegation last season, and this season has them punching well over their weight, culminating in a 3 0 victory over Premier League Giants Chelsea. In a game that exemplified all the quality. Got blew out. That Americans love. Brandon Harrison, who always stops the charts in distance run. He went ahead and charged down Chelsea's keeper. Nipped the ball off of him to open up the scoring. Then you had Tyler Adams. Who's just as hardworking, always comes in second in distance run, destroying people in the midfield. And then of course, you had the American underdog coach, Jesse Marsh, who everyone labeled a dummy. And he goes ahead and outfoxes arguably the best technical mind in club football in Thomas Tuchel. And the cherry on top, as they scored the third goal, he went ahead and Gronk spiked a water bottle. <laughs> that is not the love. They're as American as the team gets in the Premier League, and they're also owned by Americans. What do you got on a sports bra for? They're not just any Americans. They're American as the team gets in the Premier League, and they're also owned. No, what is that? Some type of special football type type of a, uh, apparatus? By Americans, they're not just any Americans. They're owned by the San Francisco 49ers. Now, we'll preface this. It's a vest that tracks heart rate and stuff. You sure about that? <laughs> to my American fans, you're, you're not rooting for Leeds United to win the league. It's, it's more like rooting for like a midfield team in F1. You're just hoping they get best of the rest. Huh? In a World Cup year, what better team as American for you to root for than Leeds United States of America? And the last team I want to talk to you guys about is Brentford FC. Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! Ah! This little team that could were only promoted to the Premier League in 2021. It was their first time back to the top flight since 1947. They had just beaten the Nazis when this team was last in the Premier League. But they made good use of their time away for it because they've garnered a reputation for sneak attacking the big teams in the Premier League. They vivisected Manchester United 4-0 in the second game of the season. Dang. And their striker, Ivan Tony. if it wasn't for Holland, this striker would probably be the story of the season because he can do it all. Free kicks, dinks, headers, poaching. And he can even do what most English players cannot, score a penalty. And not just score any old penalty. This man handles penalties like Ted Bundy handles women. Murders them. <laughs> oh, 
Nah, that's not funny, but it's funny. You might ask, how could this newly promoted Benford find a top three striker in the league? Well, they moneyball the shit out of their club. Their owner made uh, millions using analytics to find the margins in sports betting. And he thought he can go ahead and apply that to the world of international football. And that's exactly what he did. They've been able to identify players that the market undervalues. Going ahead and buying players for only a couple million and then flipping them for tens of millions. They're doing what every FIFA career mode YouTuber does, but in real life. Okay. And their lovely lot coach, Thomas Frank, he has these bees drilled to kill. And this Dutchman is not only a shrewd tactician, he also likes to party. When Brentford won promotions to the Premier League for the first time in 74 years, he stayed out with his team and partied until 6 a.m. in the morning. I he was doing some class A's. I ain't even gonna hold you. I like your party. <laughs> what a bluff. <laughs> it sounds like it. Look at it. out with his team. I, I didn't know what I expected him to sound like, but it didn't wasn't this and partied until 6 a.m. in the morning I like to party <laughs> we know <laughs> what a bloke verdict for this team they might actually be more Ted Lasso vibes than Leeds United States of America and lastly I would be remiss if I didn't give at least a mention to big old Mitro the Titanic Serbian sits second in the gold charts in the Premier League right now and he has been absolutely just terrorizing shorter fullbacks at the back post Six goals in six games. He's only played one game where he hasn't scored this season. And for fans who like to follow players more than teams, then big old Mitro. Oh. Game where he hasn't scored this season. And for fans who like to follow players. Why is he slapping his butt? More than teams, then big old Mitro. But multiple times. Like once, hey, good job. But like playing a drum solo on it is crazy. It's definitely the big sleeper striker for you this season. And that. It's gonna be it for now. It's a long, long season, but these are my early favorites and sleepers for you guys to go ahead and bandwagon this year. Now, since it is a long season, I think that I'll be probably be checking in once a month throughout the season to keep you updated on how the Premier League is going. All the big juicy storylines, all the drama, and just in general, give you a close American perspective on how things are. All right, that's it. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Happening for me, this, for me, this is valid, even for the upcoming season. Even though it just ended the Premier League for next time, I got my team, but I also know who to watch out for. You know what I'm saying? And you know, now that we on kick, we're going to be watching a lot of these games, man. We might watch some live. We might watch the highlights. We're going to watch the highlights for at least uh, big games. We might watch some live, like oh, full games for the big games. You know what I'm saying? We, we're just going to get it done, man. Come to kick. Links down in the description in that link tree. I'm gone.